Hello and welcome. My name is Brendan Wendell and welcome to the Wendell Effect. Uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into this pretty quickly. But before we get started, just need to remind everybody that uh, I'm not a broker dealer or investment advisor, and I'm just looking at this information from an educational standpoint, not giving you any recommendations to buy, so hold it securities. Keep in mind that trading, it does involve risk of loss. That's always a situation, no matter what we do, to try to minimize the risk. Past performance is not indicative, indicative of future results. And I'm not subject to trading restrictions, so I can have a position of security and initiate one at any time. So that being said, make sure you follow me on Twitter at TraderBW, and you can also get a hold of me at the Wendell Effect at TradingMindsetAssociation.com. Obviously on YouTube, you probably found us here, and you can search for the Wendell Effect as well, and also find us on TradingMindsetAssociation.com for my web uh, broadcast, as well as others, and lots of great information there. So make sure you go visit us at the website. So, got a brand new, or not, sorry, not brand new, but I got an exciting announcement. I know I already had one announcement already that I'm going to be doing the chart school separate, and uh, that's going to be its own series of education starting up this week. But also next week, the Wendell Effect is going live. And that's right, on June 21st from 8.30 in the morning till 10.30 in the morning Eastern time. So it'll be for two hours, a little bit before the market opens, a little bit after the market is open. I'm actually going to be doing a live broadcast of the Wendell effect. So I'll actually give you some insight into what I do as a day trader in a normal day, as well as a little bit of a longer term investor. Uh, again, just taking a look at the different markets as we normally do, <clears throat> excuse me, but doing it from a live standpoint, answering questions if you have them. So it'll be a lot of fun. Make sure you don't miss that. That is June 21st next week, 8.30 a.m. Eastern. It's on a Tuesday, a little bit different time frame, but that's okay. We're going to do it on Tuesday. There'll be plenty of markets to talk about and things to discuss. So make sure you're there. And you'll be able to find it on YouTube Live. That's where I'm going to be doing it. It's on YouTube. So make sure you find me there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and shrink me down here. And we're going to jump right into the analysis. And our schedule for today, going back to our normal schedule here, we got the weekly market analysis. We'll start off with the equity index futures, then move on into energy futures. Going into stocks and sector analysis with uh, some ideas for individual stocks. And then bring it back to the Indian markets as well. So we'll take a look at those. I split them off into an individual video on YouTube, and I'm going to go ahead and bring them back here. And, uh, well, I've got a lot of requests, so I listen to the people. <laughs> anyway, we'll go ahead and kick this off by looking at the equity index futures for this week, for the week of June 12th. Starting off with the ES, and we had a pretty rough week last week for the bulls, but not so much for the bears. I kind of saw things coming. Remember, we talked about this candle right here where we had the indecision last week. And if we break the high, then we're bullish. Break the low, we're bearish. Well, the lows won. And you can see that we are nowhere near bullish territory in that RSI to begin with. Very, very weak, uh, not even up to 50, let alone 60. So the bearishness is continuing. Now the big test will be if we can get down to a fresh low when we make a low in price, we need to make a low in the RSI as well. Otherwise, positive divergence could lead to a bit of a rally. So we'll see what happens as we get down to the previous lows, 38.10. The next target is about 3,700, actually, if you're looking at the Fibonacci extensions there. Going into the daily chart, really nothing much changed. Uh, when we came up to these highs, you can see we actually had a small head and shoulders formation on the indicator. And believe it or not, that translates into bearishness in price. So you can see that there are patterns, double tops, double bottoms, head and shoulders. They are on the indicators, and they actually do work on the price itself. You had one back here as well. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder, break, and there goes price, the be, uh, beginning of April. So we had another one right here, broke us out of that sideways block that, or uh, rectangle that we were in or whatever you want to call it, but that sideways motion was uh, you know, the end of the upward move and the beginning of the downward move now. So again, we just got to make sure that we have enough momentum to break through the prior lows. Otherwise, it could be a bit of a rally, so watch for that. Uh, you see, when we go down to the four hour chart, we actually can project the move down that we just recently had impulse sideways, little correction, and impulse down. On Friday, we made it down to 3,900, which was our measured move if we're only doing one to one. Basically, that means that we repeated the previous impulse down. So, if we're going to extend beyond that, then we could go down to 3,820 before we get a significant bounce here. If not, we could get a little small bounce kicking off on Monday, Sunday going into Monday, really. And then by the end of the week, I still see that we're going to be going lower. Uh, if you take a look at the continuous contract, because honestly, the current contract doesn't have any demand back here. So going on this four-hour chart, just trying to find targets, really, 3,700 
was not only a Fibonacci extension to the downside, but it was also an area of demand that was on the chart going all the way back to 2021, January, believe it or not. Yeah, we're going all the way back, wiping out a couple of years of price action here. Well, a year and a half, basically. And uh, yeah, next we got the 3581 and 3450. And then, well, we'll see. <laughs> uh, hopefully it doesn't get that bad for people, but we'll see. You know, it's just the way the markets are going right now. We're in a downtrend bear market. And you got to play it as such. The NASDAQ has really been our leader to the downside. It's been the weakest index or the strongest downwards, if you will. You can see we're coming down to our demand we hit before. We ate through most of the orders there, so there's no reason for it to pause here again. And momentum is still pretty strong downwards. We have a slight bounce. This is the weekly and are continuing to move down. But again, we want to make sure that we have the same or more momentum on the RSI as we come down and retest the prior lows. If we don't, we could get a little bounce here first. Going into the daily chart, it looks like there's a little bit of demand just below where we're uh, making a new low at 11,265. So watch out for that. And then we could break under 10,000. You know, this is, again, it's been the weakest index down over 20% right now. And it looks like it's going to continue to lead us down. If anything, the, the bounces will be coming here first because this is our leader down. That's where you would far, start to see the strength before anything else. On the four hour chart, really same picture, lots of weakness. We had that measured move of one to one for the most part. We duplicated the first impulse with a little bit of a pause at 12, uh, 293 and then continue down. We should still continue down if we get any kind of rally, which obviously on this time frame doesn't look like it's gonna happen. Uh, we wouldn't be seeing any kind of a meaningful bounce until 11,124. So lots of bearishness still to come. Taking a look, I've done this a couple times before, where you take a look to see the strongest markets when it comes to NASDAQ, who's really pulling us in which direction, it'd be Apple and Microsoft as a two heavyweights. So looking at Apple, there's no help. As far as bulls, there is no help there. You can see that we had tested this area of demand at 134, and it was a pretty good strong area of demand, but we're going to go right through it this time because there's nothing there to hold us up. Again, watch to see the momentum on the RSI it should be making a new low when we get down to that level of demand so we can break through and head to the 122. And there might be a little bit of a pause here at about 128, but that's not really a great demand zone, so I didn't mark it off. So if anything, we might go a little sideways before we continue to go down to the 122 area. So that's going to take the NASDAQ lower. Same thing with Microsoft. There's just no demand here anywhere nearby until that 236.80 area. So if both of those have the bearishness that's going to continue, that's going to continue to take the NASDAQ lower. Moving over to the Dow, this has been the strongest out of all the markets. It's gone down the least amount, but it's still going down nonetheless. Everything's being dragged downwards. We're eating through this demand. Once again, want to make sure we get enough momentum to get through, and we will get down to the 28,457 for our next demand zone down there. And if you can keep, keep going down, uh, 21,437 is the next area of demand below that. That's all I got on the weeklies. Daily chart, everything's still the same. Lots of weakness. We broke out of that sideways basing that we had for a little while, and we're heading down towards 3,235 as our first area of demand. And then we've got 26,796 down below that on the daily chart. On the four hour, same picture. You had this impulse down, correction, impulse down that was duplicated. So we could get a small pullback, but that's all it would be is a reset and a new opportunity to end up in entering new shorts. And that's really what I'm looking for. Again, I wouldn't really short the Dow. It's the strongest of the markets. I'd be more inclined to look at the NASDAQ or the Russell as a shorting opportunity, maybe even the ES. But the Dow is the strongest, so you want to kind of avoid that. And then the next demand zone is 3306. Uh, over to the Russell, the other weak market, you can see that we have an impulse down, correction up. It actually did hit a Fibonacci retracement about 50%, and now we should be impulsing down. We have one target at 1648, then the next target's right in the demand that's kind of been tested already. You can see we had this uh, little drop base rally that was tested, but there's still a little bit of buying pressure in there, and it's also the next target at 1480. So we'll see if we stall out a little bit in that area. Remember, the NASDAQ is still dragging everything down. But if the Russell finds a little footing in that area, then it could pause the markets for a little bit. I don't see a reversal there. But again, 
We'll watch to see what the market does when we hit those levels. Going to the daily chart, pretty much the same picture, not, not really much different there. There is a little bit of demand before we get to that 1486. That was the measured move, 1480, 1486. Uh, taking measurements off the daily and the weekly, they're the same. So you got 1652, 1648 versus 1486, 1480. Uh, so we're looking about the same areas there on the dailies we did the weekly. You can see that we are definitely going to make new lows here. And I say that this low should be broken because when we rallied, we could not get above 60. Typically, if you don't get above 60 on a rally, like you see here, you make fresh lows. Now, there are exceptions right here. We rallied up, couldn't get above, above 60 and failed to make a new low. Okay, but we were below 40 right here. So the next move... I see us going down lower and hitting that 16.52 this week. Looking at the four-hour time frame, we hit a little bit of demand. We kind of overshot it a little, but it was the measured move once again, 100% duplication of the previous impulse. I don't think we're going to get much of a bounce here. It just doesn't look like it. If we do, again, I'm still looking for shorting opportunities on the bounces. And the next target, 17.10, and of course, the other ones I showed you previously as well. Moving over to the energy markets, we'll take a look at that. Obviously, there's been lots of movements to the upside, been feeling the pain of the pump. On the weekly chart of crude oil, I've got some good news for you. It looks like it might be stalling out. You can see we had a doji last week, and the reason why we stalled out there, that was a measured move. 0.618 was our target for the measured move to the upside. We hit it the week before. Now we got some comp confirmation that we're stalling in that area with the doji. We just need to see which way we're going to break. We break the lows, we get a pullback. We break the high, we continue. That's pretty much it. We'll continue up to the next measure move. I think that's somewhere around 124. So hopefully we get the break to the downside. And that's kind of what the markets are pointing at. You can see we're making this new high in price, but we're not getting a new high in momentum. That usually leads to a pullback in price. So there may be a little bit of relief at the pump pretty soon. As a matter of fact, we get a 50% retracement that puts us right into a great demand zone. So that's really my target, 110.56 for this week. As you see on the daily chart, well, we may not make it all the way there, but we're gonna try. You know, we got pause points at 117 and 113 on the way ultimately to 110 before we can rally again. So that's what I'm expecting. Just a pullback right now, unfortunately. I wish it were a trend reversal, but it looks like it's just gonna be a bit of a pullback for this week before we potentially could go higher. On the four hour chart, I mentioned that inverted head and shoulders last week. And of course it followed through. It didn't quite get to the measured move. All we did was a Fibonacci extension and we hit that. We did a 100% continuation of the previous impulse. And notice though, what we did here, prices made the high and almost the same high, but this high was not above 40 or 60. Sorry, was not above 60 on the RSI. So since we couldn't get above 60 on the RSI, Made a fresh low. As you can see, we pulled back right here. We might even go back a little further and back down towards this 117 or even down to the 110 eventually, like I said. So we are seeing weakness on smaller time frame, just like we saw the indecision on the higher time frame. So watch to see if we break that low of the weekly chart this week, that could send us much, much lower in the next couple of weeks, which would be great if you're trying to go to the pump and fill up. Nat gas, not a whole lot going on here. Same thing though, we've been moving up. Now we've got an indecisive candle with a small body. Momentum is dying off a little bit. As you can see, the RSI is kind of drifting a little bit down and sideways, showing momentum dying off just a bit. We did get a divergence here on the daily chart and we've already pulled back. Not sure if that's gonna continue. Right now we're trying to rally up and this will be a key pattern right here. We had a negative divergence. If we follow that, with a high that fails to get above 60, which we are right now, we're failing to get above 60. If this candle breaks the low, then we're likely to see a pretty good move and a possible trend change. That's what you look for for a signal is a divergence followed by a high that fails to get above 60 on the RSI, that signals trend reversal. So we're very close to doing that. Just watch to see if we can break this low, which I think is about 8.5, uh, maybe 8.6 actually is where it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if we break that low, look for us to continue the trend to the downside finally. And looking at the four hour chart, we actually did get that trend reversal I was talking about. Notice the divergence right here dropped, tried to rally, failed to get above 60. That's trend reversal right there. 
So we're likely to make a lower high and now a lower low. And really our next level demand, I forgot to mark, is down here about seven. So we could trend all the way down to seven, possibly even lower after a small bounce. So I'm a bit bearish now on that gas. And I'll be looking for new supply zones to sell after we make the lower low. So look for that confirmation. Gasoline also hit a measured move target right there. Basically duplicated the previous impulse to the upside. And once again, on the weekly chart, if we break the low of this candle, just like with the crude oil and even that gas, then likely to continue to move down for a little while. We could get all the way down to 3.14. That's my pie demand there, right? 3.14. Well, it's not 3.1416 dot dot dot. It's 1499. Anyway, math, math fun there for you. Uh, it doesn't look like we're going to get there very quickly, by the way. That's a weekly chart. We may not even get all the way down that level because we're still very, very bullish. I do see us pulling back a little bit, though. And we did pretty much the same kind of basing we did in the stock market on the daily chart here. We went sideways, and we'll see if that leads to a breakdown. If it does, well, you know, we failed to make a target here. We, we saw, you see stalling points at each one of these Fibonacci extensions, but we failed to meet the third target. Instead, we got a kind of a divergence here where prices were weak. I'm sorry, price was a little bit weak, honestly, but the momentum was weaker. So I'm expecting to look for this breakdown or break out. Either way, I'll play it either direction. But honestly, I think it's going to break to the downside out of this range. And if it does, well, this is possibly a little bit of demand. We could bounce from this 3.9 area or take it all the way down to about 3.7. So we'll keep an eye out for that for this week. Whoops. On the four hour chart, we have actually a couple, of, a couple of demand zones to look at. So you see we have negative divergence. We're pulling back a little bit. This has been a tested zone, but it could still hold a little bit of buying pressure. We barely touched it at 4.5. Then we got 3.95, 3.81. It's gonna be a tough fight to go down. But if the trend is changing and we are going down, then we will, we'll get through those. We'll just keep bouncing as we're moving down. It's going to make it very choppy and hard to trade unless you go to smaller intraday time frames, which is fine. You just got to adjust and do that. Finally, uh, heating oil on the weekly. Well, we didn't get to our target here. You see, we paused at this first measurement, but we haven't made it to the second measurement yet. We're getting the indecision candle again because of everything that's happening in these energy markets. So watch to see if we break the low 4.2466 then that confirms a bit of a reversal and a pullback going on right now. It'll probably stall out all the way down to about 3.8. You can see I've got the Fibonacci uh, retracements now because I'm expecting that's our high, a bit of a pullback. And you can kind of see the weakness coming in anyway. All green leading to mixed red and green, right? There was no two red candles together until back here. All we saw was just bullishness. So we're getting that weakness coming in right now. I should expect a bit of a correction. Where? I don't know. So we've got the Fibonacci targets here, 23.6, 38.2, 50%, 61A, and so on. We'll see where we end up bouncing. It's not going to make a brand new low. We're not going to reach below 3.6. I would say that most likely we'll stall somewhere either at 50% or at 61A. So that's about 4.06 or 3.96 which, no, I didn't really have anything. Yeah, 3.6 was an area right here I was looking at. That's a little bit lower than all this. So I don't, think, I don't see us getting down there. I see it somewhere in here on the pullback. On the four-hour chart, on the heating oil, again, we had negative divergence where we tried to make the higher high. We actually made a measured move, and we got the negative divergence now leading us a bit to the downside. So we'll see if that's going to continue to push downwards. Moving over to the stock market, well, there's nothing really hot right now about the stock market. The performance has been pretty pitiful, but we'll take a look at this week. You can see actually for the last six months, still energy has been the leader. Not too surprising considering that we are in an inflationary environment. So let me just check something. All right, here we go. Uh, what I wanted to do is just bring up the dollar index. And you can see right now on the dollar index, we've had an impulse, a little bit of a pullback. We've got uh, a lot of loss of momentum here. So while we didn't make a new high yet, ah, I hit that wrong spot, you can see that our momentum is dying dramatically. There you go. And usually when you have inflation, you should see the dollar declining in value, it declines in purchase power, right? 
So we've still been seeing bullishness here overall, which is a little bit weird, but uh, we should see a bit of a pullback. The next area of demand, this is a weekly chart. And if we do pull back, the first level of demand that I have is down here, 99.126 to 97.685. If we do continue to push higher and find some more momentum, that'll cause the commodities to come back down, as I was showing you. That's why I wanted to go out to the US dollar index and take a look at that. Going to the daily time frame on the dollar index, same picture. There's really not much difference here. You can see that divergence. Well, it's not divergence, actually. It's just telling us that we're losing momentum and failing to make the highs we had before. So if we make a new high, then we'd have divergence because we're not getting the momentum there. And if we do pull back, there's actually a small area of demand on the daily right here. And actually, without making a new low, we have rally base. Actually, you know what? Wait a minute. It's this whole area. Rally, base, 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 and rally. So 102.54, if we do stumble in the dollar, it's not going to stumble much. That would actually cause the commodities to go to the upside rather than to the downside. So we'll keep an eye out on that. Anyway, getting back over to our sectors, inflation is still very, very high. So therefore, energy has been the leading sector for the last six months. In the last month, it's still even been the best. You know, you look at May 10th to June 10th. Okay, that was Friday. And that's one of the few shining stars, the only shining star in the sectors there. Honestly, you got a little bit in utilities, but that's going to go away with higher interest rates. And materials are still not, they're not dying, but they're not doing great. Look at last week, though. Last week, everything sucked. <laughs> Energy sucked a little bit less. But you can see financials were dragging us down, not to be surprised. I mean, and financials don't do well in high interest rates. They do well in low interest rate environments. And if the Fed is in the mode that they need to raise interest rates, which they're way behind in having to do so, you know, that's why inflation is so high. Well, there's other reasons, too. You can't print money forever and not have a repercussion. But you also got technology, 6.36 to the downside and discretionary to the downside as well. So we'll focus on those a little bit here. You take a look at the market last week, and it was ugly unless you like shorting or unless you were playing the energy market we still had a few shining stars as i said and actually i got to figure out what this one was over here too with well, consumer cyclical we had one green guy over there uh let me see if i can go out real quick and find out what that was this will show you what i use it's stockcharts.com that should be stock charts plural oh no i'm sorry for the map that's finviz There we are. So in Finviz, I just go to the map of the markets here and I can go back to one week performance. And there it is. That is Domino's Pizza. So nobody could afford gas to go out. So they kept ordering Domino's last week, apparently. <laughs> Makes sense. That and they shopped at Dollar General. This is cheap. And what else we got? Package. Uh, let's see. Campbell's Soup. Well, it makes you feel good. Smuckers. So a lot of PB and J and soup. <laughs> Anyway, Kellogg's got their cereal in the morning and the Kraft Heinz company for the ketchup. Why not? Oh, whatever. Anyway, so that's what was bullish last week. You got a little bit of oil and gas refineries, of course, with the gas prices going up as well. Anyway, getting back to these, whoops, the market here. Let's jump back over. And you can see the energy market, as I said, was the shining star for the week. Got uh, oil and gas refineries kind of leading us to the upside. We may got a blank page there. There we go. XLE, that was last week. So last week, we were looking at the energy markets as uh, the bullish shining star, so to speak. We had a little bit of weakening in the momentum, but you know, it still wasn't looking too bad. We had already hit one target, which was the 89.30, duplicating the previous impulse, but it looked like it was ready to continue to the upside. And if we go to this week, you can see that's exactly what it did. So we broke to the upside, and then, of course, as the market dumped, we came back down. But the fact that we had that big move early in the week meant that it was still somewhat bullish by the end of the week. Although, when you take a look, let's see, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're actually negative by the end of the week. And that just got to remind you that even though the markets are going down, you can't just buy the defensive sectors because they can still go down as well. They just don't go down as fast. So looking at uh, Baker Hughes, that was one of the uh, stocks we were looking at. This was for the long entry on the hourly chart. Uh, looking forward to get up to the targets. You can see, I think this is one I picked several weeks ago, and we were above 
60 on the RS or 40 on the RSI. So we were okay to buy. And then unfortunately, or no, fortunately, it only made it to target one, but didn't make it to target two. You can see it came back down and there was no entry again because we basically had already tested the zone. Plus, when you're below 40 on the RSI, you're going to break the demand zone. And we were there well before we hit the zone once again. So unfortunately, hit target one, never hit target two. We've been stopped out for a profit if you adjusted. Looking at uh, Earthstone Energy, this was another one. I was waiting for a pullback for a demand zone to buy in 1960. And unfortunately, I know what you did. Sorry, did we come back to that one? I'm trying to see if this one came back. Yeah, that was June 6th, so 5th, and going into 6th last week. And you can see we actually did hit the zone. So hopefully you got into that once again. It only made the first target, not the second target. It had a bit of a pullback since then. If you're not out of this yet, you need to be because what happened was we went below 40 right here. We had a high that failed to get above 60. We've gone below 40. We're going to make lower highs and lower lows and break down, possibly targeting 1652. Honestly, this may be a good short opportunity somewhere in this neighborhood of, uh, what is that, about 2170, 2180. I'd have to look at it exactly. But then this is going to break, so we should go down to 1650. So look for that as a possible short candidate pretty soon. SM on the four hour chart was an opportunity. We were waiting for a pullback to an area of demand and looking forward here, it never happened. You can see I went down, uh, it was a four hour. So I went down to the hourly chart on this too to kind of, kind of fine tune it. And we ended up just going sideways. So looking back at the four hour time frame, still not really moving much. We uh, did pull, or sorry, we moved up towards this Fibonacci extension target number one or really a duplication of the prior impulse. And what happened is that it formed an area of demand here. You got drop, base, rally. Let's see, did I mark that one off? Ah, no, yeah, I did, here it is, SM. So you can see on the four hour time frame. actually I showed it a little bit differently, it said drop, base, rally, we actually have, this is the drop, lots of basing, and then the rally out. So either way you look at it, it could just be, well, let me just do that. SM on the four hour, let me go back over to, oops, on page. Right here, SM240, because what I was noticing, I put it in as this with the, the drop, base, and rally. But if you want to take a little less risk, you could look at it like this. Drop, base, and rally right here. Oops, sorry. <laughs> There's a, a mother duck and seven baby ducks that are teasing my dogs right now. So I heard a quack and I was wondering, the babies actually go inside my fence sometimes and try to play with my dogs. And uh, they don't know any better. <laughs> my dogs don't hurt them though they're just like playing around with them anyway uh i love nature so what i was saying here is again we've got this as a possible demand zone instead it was about 49.31 down to 47.76 so you can tie, time that a little bit differently with the entry if you want to or if you wanted to go on the bigger zone basically it's this and we've already hit the zone and started turning around so we'll have to see if we just keep going, then obviously we missed out on the opportunity because I don't want to chase. However, if it ends up using the lower zone and we haven't hit that yet to the, the bottoming, then we could potentially continue to go down. We just adjust this. There it is, 49.10. And that would be our first target, 53.53 and then 56.27. Okay, so looking at the ground again, this has been the overall market for the last month. And you can see, again, there's been a few pockets of bullishness, but overall, everything's pretty bearish. So we'll take a look at a couple more opportunities. First is HF Sinclair Corporation. And the Sinclair, they use the, uh, the dinosaur, if you ever looked at their logos for the gas pumps. So you got Dino, D-I-N-O, on the four-hour chart, waiting for a pullback to this area of demand of 51.50 and 50.75. Great album. Anyway, so... Some of you guys know what I was talking about there, 51.50. And you've got 59.39 as the first target, 64.27 as target number two. DK, or Delic Hold US Holdings, also a possible buy opportunity. This is one of my 889 strategies. Basically waiting for prices to come back and test this area of demand right here, 30.84, 30.16. We also should hopefully be testing the 89 exponential moving average at the same time. It gives it an extra push. So we'll see if that average gets up there in time as prices pull back. Target one is the 35.75, target two, 38.78. MD, NTDR, Matador Resources Company, waiting for a, a 
tight little zone right there. We'll see, maybe widen it to use the whole candle here, but you got rally base rally. And if we can pull back to that 58.55 to, what is that, 58.09, uh, we want to buy targeting 70.11, 77.25. Next, we got PBF Energy, and on a four-hour time frame, again, waiting for a bit of a pullback here with the bearish market, but this one's been holding up pretty well. These have been kind of the shining stars, again, if you will, as the markets are pulling back, they've been holding up pretty well. So the market gets a bit of a bounce, they'll bounce as well. 35.65, 35.09 for that entry for demand, target 1, 41.88, target 2, 45.73. Well, let's do a little bit of follow-up, if you will, on some of the trades that we were already looking at and see you know, what happened with those and if they're going to continue. So CTRA, this is one I looked at for a buying opportunity. They came close before, and that's always a problem. When it comes close to the zone, it can wipe out some of the buying pressure. It should be in that area when you touch. So moving forward to see what actually happened, we did hit the zone. However, there's a no entry there. And the reason why I say no entry is, when the RSI is below 40, demand will not stand. So even though there was a small bounce, it is only going to be a small bounce. If you got in, get out. Because this is going to turn around and continue to move to the downside. There's too much bearish momentum to be able to sustain a move to the upside. That's one of the filters I do when it comes to my trading, where if the RSI is below 40, I will not buy. And if the RSI is above 60, I don't go short. So you can check out some of my YouTube videos. I actually have more on that RSI as well. FANG, this is Diamondback Energy, waiting for a pullback here. There's a demand zone, rally base rally. And let's see what happened with this one. Never pulled back, it was just too strong. So I've got to abandon this. It doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. Well, we can still watch it maybe, but I don't know if that's going to really work. It should have already pulled back if it was going to happen. PRGO, Perigo Company, was another one I was looking for a pullback to 38.72 with the targets up above for supply. And let's see, this one did pull back, as you can see, 38.72. It's really at our entry right now. The RSI is just barely above 40, and there's lots of bearish pressure. So I would want to enter this this week with confirmation. So you want to watch this. Instead of sticking around on the four hour, you could possibly go down to a one hour and maybe kind of see the prices turning around. Look for, you know, as we go into the zone, maybe even down on a 10 minute chart, look for higher lows and higher highs and smaller time frames, or wait to buy until prices have turned around inside the zone and are moving up above 38.72. So get in 38.73 as it's leaving that zone. So just be careful, don't get in. If at any time we go below 40 on that RSI as we dip. If we stay above that, and we actually hit the moving average, the 89 maybe, inside of that this week, then it'd be a great buying opportunity. This trade's still on. ACAD, this was a short opportunity I was looking at, at 1886 to 1988, and didn't quite get to the zone, unfortunately. You can see we rallied up a bit and kind of hit this as a little bit of a zone, but didn't hit the initial target that I was looking for to get in. Oh, hang on a second. Okay. Make sure they didn't get the, the duckling. <laughs> One of them tried to get in and ran out of time. Anyway, uh, Grocery Outlet was another one we were looking for. And on the pullback there, we didn't quite get our entry. Oh, this one just shows already the result. I think I skip it. Anyway, yeah, you can see that it just continued to go upside. didn't uh, come down to our entry. Next was BG, B and G Foods. Looking for a short opportunity there. And unfortunately, never came into entry, so continued to drift down a bit sideways. Hormel was another one waiting for a short opportunity for it to come back up. And let's see, that one, oh, that one never came up. That's already showing you the final what happened, so we have to abandon that trade. The other thing is, we're going to continue to be bearish. You can see this is that XLY XLP spread chart I looked at. This is the weekly chart, and last week we had, well, this bull bearish move the week before. We had indecision, kind of looks like what we have right now at the top in crude oil, and we broke to the downside. Since we broke that indecision to the downside, that's going to continue to move down, and that's telling us that the markets as a whole are likely to continue to be bearish. We're seeing that the staples are outpacing the discretionary markets. So some new opportunities for us this week. We're going to be looking at the bearish side of the market. 
And one of the opportunities I have right now on a four hour time frame is this. We got a bit of a, well, actually I might fine tune that a little bit more, BBWI. So just looking at that and realizing Bath and Body Works, the zone's a little bit higher, I believe. We have rally base base drop right there. So I need to adjust this a little bit. 3727. That's pretty close. So what we have is the entry 3727, 3796 with a stop above. And then target one is 3338. No, I'm sorry. They, that's not the target. The target is 3140 and 3727. 78 those are the two targets this was the move that was already done based on the previous impulse so we came down we may not be done with this move down before we retrace so that may be the issue there we if we continue to go down it should be 33 38 there it is then this will be the measure move that we get and we'd have target one at 31 10 target two kind of lines up with the next extension number from the previous higher time frame extension so anyway, with the overall, once again, looking to short here, 37.27, 37.96, wherever the bottom happens to be. If it does go down to this 61.8% or extension before it pulls back, then we have these as our targets. Otherwise, we'll need to adjust just slightly. So continuing on with new adjustments, Wells Fargo Bank, looking for a bearish opportunity. This is going to need a pretty significant rally. So looking at the four hour supplies way up here, 44.23, 44.70. So if we impulse correct back, we impulse down again, we got targets of 41 and 39, basically. If we go, well, hang on a second here, on Wells Fargo, if we drop down, instead of just looking at the four hour time frame, let's take a look at the 60 minute. Nope, there's nothing there. I was trying to see if there was a supply zone that was a little bit closer on the 60 minute to be able to get in. And there really isn't. Even the 15 minute, let's see. I refresh now. Not really much there. So nope, we're gonna have to stick with what we had there. And we'll see if we can rally that much. I just don't see it happening to be able to get in. That's the way it goes. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you can't. So JRF, Jeffrey's Financial Group, another short opportunity. Obviously, the financials are a weak sector, so we want to short it. If it's gonna continue, might as well. So looking at supply here, 3084, 3106, looking for that pullback again. You know, he had that big gap down this last, uh, it was about a week or so ago, week and a half ago, and then we continue to try to rally, but are just dying off. If we can rally up, that'd be a great short. I just don't know if we're going to get up there. Anyway, that's the hourly on Jefferies. Moving on to India. For my last section here, we're going to talk about the Indian markets. So Kim Cho, welcome back, everyone. And look at the Nifty. We retested an area of demand again, but... Very weak bounce this time. This is looking like we're going to push downwards to the 15,000 level. Would not be surprised to see us overshoot and go to the 14,966. Maybe not this week, obviously, because you can see that's going to take a while to get there. But ultimately, that's my target now because on the weekly move, we tested demand, bounced, couldn't make a new high, made lower high, lower low. We're making lower high, lower low. So this is going to take a little time, but I'm very bearish on this market. On the daily, you can see our most recent rally came up 61.8%, and we could not get above 60 on the RSI. So showing lots of weakness, we should be able to continue to break down this week. I would suspect that we're probably gonna make a fresh low by the end of the week. It kinda looks like what we should see here. Lots of bearish pressure. Look at the nifty on the four hour, we're not gonna go straight down. We got a possible bounce opportunity here, 16.111. But I would use that for shorting opportunities. You can actually see rally base drop. That might be a good selling opportunity at about 16,600 or a little under that 16,500 area. So if we get a bounce, it'll be here 16,111, but we're not going to go very far. And I'll be watching to see if we get below 40 on the RSI. Obviously, as we hit that demand zone, if we're below 40, we won't make a new high even. We shouldn't break this area before we continue lower. So if I go back to the nifty, Let's see, yep, that was on the four hour chart. We were just looking at it coming down and possibly not getting above this high because we're likely to bounce off the 16,111 with uh, price being below 40 on the RSI. So if that's the case, if I go down to a 60 minute chart, this might be our opportunity to short right here. Let's see, what's the low on this? We have 
252.40 and the close 254.20. So that's actually part of the basing. Yep. I wasn't sure if it was, but we got drop, base, base, drop. That's your supply zone to short again. 16.254. 16302 and now let's take a look see for targets obviously at the four hour but i think we're gonna hit that 16111 first and yep we may be turning around pretty soon this is on a one hour time frame rally base rally right there and then if i short the two uh 254 area my target would be this because i think we're going to bounce here first before we go up so if we end up hitting Again, 16.254, sell opportunity, target 15.951. I think it looks pretty good for the one hour time frame. So, moving along here, we can take a look at Reliance, which is obviously the big heavyweight. And where Reliance goes, so goes the market. Well, we've pulled back quite a bit, 50%. Doesn't look like we're going to go back up very high. You know, I'm seeing weakness as we rally. We got lower highs, and we're getting lower highs here as well. So, if we rally, fail to make a new high and fail to get above 60, I would expect this to end up breaking down. Our first demand zone is right here at 2640. So let me go to Reliance real quick on the live chart. And looking at Reliance, as I was saying, I don't think this Fibonacci is gonna help us much. Actually, this either, I'm gonna start fresh. You can see we're pausing right now. If we break to the downside, then we continue down, as I said, to demand right here. Let's make sure that's got to be 3670. 3637. Okay, so this one was. Oh, wait, 3670. 37, that's higher. Okay, so we got 37 for that downside target. Now, I'm questioning where would we end up shorting? Well, this is definitely supply rally, base, 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 and there's your drop, but that's not a good zone because move out was the same height as the zone we can take a look at a 60 minute chart i'm sorry this is 60 let's go into maybe a 15 minute chart and no there's nothing else there i mean yeah it's rally base drop right here perhaps let's see we got 76 15 76 even there it is so 2776, we got again rally base drop from that area. It looks pretty good. And that's your first target, 2637. Now we may not rally at that point. We may just break out of this sideways basing that we're in right now. 2704, 27 to 18. I noticed I cut out the wicks. But right there, that's the bulk of the price action. So if we end up breaking out of that area, going to the downside, I'm targeting 2637. So that's kind of what I'm seeing on Reliance, and obviously that would take the Nifty to the downside if that happens. So moving along here, Bank Nifty, consolidation, it's still happening. We had a rally that was much weaker. We couldn't even get to the top of the consolidation. That's usually a sign we're going to break out. So we'll see. You know, we have high, low, high, low. Failed to make that high that was even close to the prior highs. So that's showing a lot of weakness. And you can see that we couldn't even get to 50 on the RSI. So lots of weakness. Getting ready to break to the downside. And the first demand is at 24,809 on the weekly. So looking at smaller time frames, you can see we pulled back about 50% of our previous impulse and are now impulsing down. So my daily target is 32,529. Second is 332. On this previous rally right here, you see we failed to get above 60. So that's extremely bearish, likely to push to the downside. So that's what I got for you this week. Again, quick reminder, don't forget to join me next week. I'm going to be doing a live session on the 21st of June at 8.30 a.m. Eastern, an hour before the U.S. markets open up. So be sure to join me for some uh, pre-market activity. I'll talk about the gaps. We'll talk about, again, like whatever you want to talk about. but I have a routine that I usually go through as a day trader as well as a swing trader. And I'll kind of walk you through some of those opportunities and things I look at, answer questions. It'd be a lot of fun, a lot of interaction. It'll be on YouTube. So don't forget to check that out coming up next week. And until then, everyone, trade safe, trade well, and take care. I'll see you soon.